Hello, everyone. Hello, Weihan. Yes, hi Jay, hi everyone. Uh, it's been a while, but we are on round four in the penultimate round of the EGT 2024 Championship, and we are in Okayama, Japan. Oh yes, we are. So we've come to Japan for another round of uh, the EPP season, and I would say this is one of the, uh, I guess, easier tracks to handle because it's it's a place where where it's quite easy to go battling. The track is relatively flat compared to a lot of other places. Yeah, and we've also got some nice sakura trees in the background. Yeah, it's a cherry blossom season, so we have sakura trees uh, in the background. It, it is a quite simple track, but it's also quite um, it's, it's a it's a slow flowing track. I would say that it's long corners, but all the corners are pretty slow. So it's kind of in a tricky situation when you are in between downforce and non downforce so a quick look at the pro championship uh Russell reyes has a perfect record three out of three leading the two leader of races uh drivers just Lam had a p3 in round three and that put him in p4 in overall standing uh peter Wong and paco chan maintaining a very consistent finish and then jerry can also score quite big points uh last race and after that we have leo yes gala etc For the team standings, oh, yeah, we do have Legion of Racers continuing to lead the team's tables after the midpoint of the season. So Legion of Racers takes the top seat, but JMX Phantom is very close behind, uh, taking a second spot in the team's standings. And if we look at the M driver standings, we do have Liu Leung, who's got quite a good uh, position at this point, 68 points, leading the, M's, uh, the M tables with Gen Man. Uh, not too far behind at all, 61 points on second, and we've also got some of the other drivers, Eros Chan with 45 points, and the rest of the drivers, uh, 30 points and below, will be Haywood Sui and Nixon Law onwards. Well, leading at this point sometimes is in like, like the best thing, because like uh, football, <laughs> when, you're, <laughs> when, when you're kind of like leading most of a season, you usually like expect uh, at, your, at the end. So uh, Rako's here uh, with 96 points. Mm -hmm. Should be the first team to break 100 points in the championship so far, and then in front of uh, um, SYM and then uh, Crazy Night Esport Racing. So we are going to proceed to 20 minutes of qualifying here at Okayama, and I just can't get enough of those uh, sakura, sakura trees oh, yeah. in the background. It's April now. This it's April now. Probably that's the reason. Nice why. thing about sim racing is. You, you can put it any time of the day, any day of the season. <laughs> That's a nice <laughs> thing. Uh, it's quite, uh, we, we base it on uh, real, real, real time weather, so it's quite chilly. And then a lot of drivers are complaining about not getting tire temps, uh, even like all the way. So um, there are a lot of uh, right hand turns, but not really a lot of left hand turns. So the right side tires are quite chilly. So we are seeing here Jen Man uh, overtaking Jen, uh, Jerry Ken to uh, take the lead uh, in the first qualifying run. So he has the pace again. He is very confident in his pace. So he's looking to just put a foot down and put a good lap and then win it by pace. Simple. Yeah, so I, I think here at Okayama, it's, it's, it's going to be quite easy for you to follow uh, follow along with the cars ahead of you because here you it's quite easy to get slipstream in fact slipstreaming here is quite quite a big part of the game here racing at Okayama so all of the drivers should be uh, kind of quite packed with each other especially even here in qualifying so uh, all of the drivers are on their outlap uh, at this point uh, and we th I think we, we would expect that the drivers will have plenty of opportunities to set down uh, good lap times uh, before the qualifying session comes to it, to an end, so we've well, we do have quite a big field at this point. A total of twenty, I would say, twenty-two drivers mm -hmm. racing out here. So I think that's uh, definitely great to see. You so the track used here, the the layout uh, here at Okoyama is the full layout. Yeah. So that means we've got the main stretch. We've also got a long back stretch. This back stretch in particular, where drivers are kind of just going full throttle all the way and. A lot of incentives for drivers to slipstream and think of overtakes and and stuff like that. So definitely great stuff indeed. And then you have this kind of like a third sector where it's full of a lot of 90 degree mm -hmm. corners to the left and to the right and maybe even tighter than that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which is where you can kind of think of overtaking moves here. So great, great track, great, great, nice place to go racing. Uh, it's quite flat, uh, so it's definitely one of the places which is easy on the drivers. Yeah, uh, the track used to be called T1 Ida, uh, used to be the home track of Master in Japan, but then they uh, they sold it, uh, renamed it Okayama into the circuit, and then has been on the calendar of most Japanese racing uh, series ever since. So it's quite an old track, so that's why it's not so wide, and then it's quite slow by today's standard. So yeah, there's a lot of following the leaders, uh, a lot of trying to um, run side by side and then try to gain advantage in the left and right switchbacks. So uh, Jamin had tried to stick with Russell Reyes uh, as his like a pace car. So he's now doing quite well. Uh, Twenty-seven point nine is the best time for the M class, and he's also in front of, of a few of the pro class now. So pole to win that's his plan i think that is but you all can already can see in the front there's already potentially uh traffic uh by from people who choose to start the qualifying uh on the offset strategy to everyone else so it's not a super long track so and when you hit traffic there isn't a lot of pace uh, space to run so uh, a bit of a gamble a bit of a randomness there yeah, this track is quite quite narrow, so that kind of adds to the challenge for the drivers. And also the fact that some of the corners, especially the last four corners here, the last couple of corners, the apexes are very close uh, to each other, so the drivers are really... In some ways, they're kind of wrestling with their car as they take on the final uh, sector, especially. So, drivers have come across line with most of the drivers having set down their qualifying lap times, so... Of course, uh, as always, Moreno Pratama up in the <laughs> up in pole, uh, with Russell Reyes up there as well. And Jen Man has come around the line uh, with a provisional pole for the M class and also a P4 uh, qualified lap time. So definitely great performance. I think Jen Man will probably promote to throw class next season, perhaps. <laughs> well, definitely, I say. But it depends on whether next season. Well, we're still thinking about the format because. Uh, Obviously, we, we want to have like Pro and M on the same on the same grid as always, but at the same time, we try to like uh, think about if we can have some kind of like success a uh, penalty or success uh, bonus. So maybe some driver can move to Pro class if we do well in the last race, some some form like that. So we see all, uh, to today we see uh, Moreno and Chester Lamb are both quite rapid in practice. Uh, Moreno had the fastest time in practice, so. After a quite disappointing uh, race last round, uh, probably this will be uh, the bounce back he needed uh, to bring his team, uh, to secure his team's lead in the championship and then to leave himself in front of a few other drivers. Yeah, so Chester Lam, one of the more interesting drivers on the grid as well. He's currently qualified fourth with a, I, I guess he's, he's probably put in a I think that's the sector. Oh yeah, he's currently coming. He's just done his time in the second sector, and he's now down to the uh, final sector as well. So for Chester Lam, he'll have to beat. Uh, if he wants to move up a position, he'll have to beat a lap time of one twenty six eight three three one. I guess and around the final corner comes Chester Lam. What lap time is he going to set down as he comes across the start finish line? Let's have a look. And Chester Lam sets Ooh. a one one twenty six nine four five. So that. It's still oh, P4, but it? that's a very still P4, close P4. Good. <laughs> good job, good run still, good run still. Yeah, that's a very, <laughs> very good run. And a really tight at the top. And then we see here Paco Chen with a green sector one. Uh, but sector two usually is where people lose most of the time. Uh, it's from that very long um, double left-hander. Uh, very uns unsuspecting corner. But if you are not using the arrow, if you are not carrying speed, you are losing potentially a lot of time. Is a difference between going there in third and second. So, yeah, if you can figure out how to make the front end stick there, uh, it helps a lot. But he has traffic in front from his teammates, so uh, uh, a not so bad uh, sector two as well. Uh, decent. Let's see if his teammate will get in his way.
Yeah, quite a fair bit of traffic, which is always a, a problem in qualifying, but and more so here at Okayama because all the cars are bunched up together all the time. Yeah, so I'll put a swift stream here, perhaps maybe half a ten here. Let's see. Oh, still a, a, a okay lap. Not a, not a super rapid lap, but um, he need to back off a bit and then give himself some space because behind him is Hela, who is P6, who is one step in front of him in qualifying right now. So you see a car in reverse order, the slower car in front and the faster car. <laughs> so they need to shuffle it and then figure out what to do. The, the hard part on this track is because high temps are hard to keep. You can't really afford to do a slow lap. You, you have to keep attacking, at least on the right, uh, left, uh, left hand turns to keep the high temps alive. And then basically just hope the car in front will do something different, go in the pits or something and then uh, keep ties alive for that one golden lap. Yeah, I kind of noticed that uh, over here it's mostly the right hand corner. There are more right turns than left turns. So, uh, yeah, uh, you, you, you're right there. I think I think that that's something for drivers to keep in mind. I think it's it's kind of like one of the other tracks, like Lime Rock Park, where you're constantly turning right instead of left. Yeah. Well, anyways, we ride with uh, this is Jerry. Jerry can yeah. Very can, yeah, with a Corvette, Corvette GT3 car, one of the nicest, uh, subjectively nicest yeah, yeah. sounding, perhaps, GT3 cars out there. I do think so. I mean, it's a very unique shape. It's a very unique uh, engine note. Uh, always mm -hmm. been very fast because uh, I think in the last season, there's only one entry uh, from official team, factory team, but still managed to, I think they won a class podium, a class finish. Uh, class win uh, last year, so uh, a lot of potential as always. This car, but I made a bit of a mistake from Jerry Can and T out, out of T1 and into the transition to T2. So it's a very um, a lot of understeer in T1. And then if you try to force the car around, sometimes it's break away from you and become a sudden oversteer. So, headache. <laughs> Yeah, so the cars making their way along the back stretch. Uh, very good, very nice shots of of Okayama from from afar at this point. Yeah, really nice. Like a very chill day. <laughs> we are entering <laughs> this a very chill uh, atmosphere. So although the championship is very much on the line, but uh, we are uh, we put still uh, we put sportsmanship and then uh, a good show over everything else here. So we don't really see a lot of. Well, mean moves, but <laughs> there are incidents, <laughs> but they are not, not intentional, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's part of racing, but uh, just, you know, keep it all controlled. So we've passed the halfway point of qualifying, and Paco Chan continues at uh, in position in 8th. And yeah, I think we look, we do have someone in the pits. <laughs> yeah, Proton yeah, some of the cars going to the pits. Very fast uh, sector, but then he chose to, I think, reset ah. his connection, but then... By the way, it's looking. Uh, we we have the first time have an all arrow out front row, so that would go a long way into stopping uh, Russell Reyes from getting his third, a fourth consecutive win. <laughs> it's like getting like F one. You see which day, uh, which day <laughs> someone else can take a win from Russell. We've got this nicely presented Legion of Racers uh, Mercedes AMG GT three again. Again, yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you just flashed the headlights there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always. Uh, it looks very, it looks very uh, simple. Uh, I think they're going back to a more simple approach. Mm. I think this can. Oh, he's flashing it really, <laughs> really flashing. <laughs> the cars in front get out of his way. So twenty six, uh, twenty six point eight is just. Yeah, just, good, uh, quite a good lap time. Just 200 yeah. in front of Reyes right now. So what's Reyes has just mm -hmm. done the best lap. Uh, 200 of a second behind uh, Moreno. But Moreno has put down a sector one time that is absolute best. Also 200 in front of his own time. So and see Reyes in front of him uh, on track. So a bit of space between the two. Yeah, I do. I, I do kind of notice that Moreno Pratama, his teammate, is somehow found himself at the other end of the of the of the 
of the timing tower, so I'm not sure what exactly happened to Moreno Pratama. His, his, his time is ah. set, so you don't really need to... Oh, although he should push, push harder because Rosario is still a threat always. So uh, Moreno mm -hmm. has a slightly worse sector 2, but still only 300. So overall, he's now 100 of a second down from his personal best. So Pratama is back, so Pratama is here. And then you see Moreno a bit of slipstream maybe from a car in front from Reyes. Reyes had, had a bad lap and then had to dodge the traffic. So this might be it. Ooh, not really, mm -hmm. not really. Close, but not close enough. So Reyes, Moreno still trapped behind one of the... I think that is uh, Girapat from uh, Ufami Esports in the BMW M4. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So Reyes has chosen to bail out. Uh, he dropped from the, he dropped from the queue, and then uh, Moreno chose to keep going. Yep. So the qualifying still continues with Giovat currently in. I would say currently qualified in 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 nineteenth. So, uh, I think it would seem that all of drivers are within a reasonable. I guess span of time uh, around one another, probably to uh, range from 126 down to 129. So I think the drivers should still be relatively well competitive uh, together. Yeah, this is uh, no real issue. Track, this is a kind of track that you don't really have. Uh, you can't really pull pull away from others quite easily because uh, it's kind of like a like a follow me kind of track. <laughs> so yeah yeah if you can get on to the pace of the cars in front you can follow his line then you will do most of the time the same the same lap time because it is mostly mechanical grip uh, and the slower stuff and yes as long as you can keep your throttle foot uh, gentle uh, you should be able to squeeze out approximately the same performance as the car in front so here we see alex lee here in m class his uh, sector 1 is only uh, 3 tenths down, but his sector 2 is where he loses more of the time because sector 2 has those, yeah, really, the two medium speed corners where you, you can kill a lot of speed if you don't know how to exploit the downforce. But still, he's P3 in M class, and that is a very competitive uh, time. And right now, we are not seeing Leo Lang. Oh, Leo Lang is P2, so, oh, okay, Alex Lee is P4. So we have Leo Lang and then Haywood second and third in class and then um the usual suspects uh the podium finisher eras channel right now is p5 so still close uh, and then his teammate those two is p6 in front of felix jones felix jones isn't really performing uh, in terms of helping his teammate so he needs to do a better job uh, in being a wingman <laughs> and then hopefully <laughs> squeeze his car in front of leo Lang. Uh, at least Haywood. So Leo Leung is doing quite okay uh, behind his two uh, pro class teammates. So he's well on the way of again another driver who will definitely be in pro class next year. And then in front of Brandon Wong as well. So Brandon Wong uh, still um, putting in the time and trying to learn the car. Chester Lam has pretty much had his figure out. Let's see. Chester Lam is on pace really. 26. Uh, the front four are all 26s and those are the cars that are um, I think uh, the best bet on finishing very strongly in the end of the season. Yeah, I quite like how the curbs here are quite quite distinct here, especially some of the corners. They've got good uh, exit curb here, so uh, the drivers don't kind of get sent out wide into the grass if they ever lose it. Uh, sometimes it's a problem here at Okayama, especially this corner. Mm -hmm. If if you take too much speed through that right hander then out you go <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> it's yeah. demonstrated by <laughs> Alex yes. for us yeah you, you the last corner is a bit of a late apex corner the entry is wider but then the exit is kind of tight so um, mm. you, you, you are sometimes like uh, being tricked into going to it too fast too early and that will happen when you like run out of track or the exit So we're seeing uh, another Sector 1, Purple Sector 1, Purple Sector 2 from Protama. Okay, oh, Bird of Protama is back. Nice. Definitely. <laughs> he's not, yeah, he's not going to repeat his mistakes like last race, definitely. <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, so less than three minutes of qualifying to go and all of the drivers have gotten their lap time in. So this is uh, Pratama. Moreno Pratama. Currently yeah, he's breathing, open. finally. After finishing <laughs> this lap, he's uh, taking his first, first breath since his lap. It's uh, his job done, 26.4 collision. Holy F. <laughs> Great job. Great job. <laughs> Great job. Great lap time there. Yep. Definitely. So Moreno looks safe. Uh, Ray US isn't on a super hot lap, uh, around two tenths from his past lap. Um, Pratama still has more to give, um, six thousands of improvement in Saturn, but then a lot of traffic in front. Yep, so the cars are now they're, they're down to their final opportunities to set down their qualifying lap times. So uh, if Luis Moreno wants a shot, at taking pole position, he has six thousands of a second that he has to make up for time difference. <laughs> so let's see if he's able to do that. Well, uh, Moreno has yeah. a personal bad sector one, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. He's still, well, he's trying to pull, but uh, he's seven hundred slower than absolute best. So he need to climb the back. Okay, Pratama has pulled oh, out of this lap, seeing out. all the traffic in front. So we're looking at <laughs> Moreno. Does he have a good sector two? Maybe. Hmm. He doesn't use all of the track and then missing the apex here, but that might be yeah. what an like arrow line is. Oh no, there's a bad, there's a bad line. <laughs> Simply a bad line. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think you can take too wide of a line there, or you, you kind of lose your pace, even though the curb is there for you. Yeah, sometimes you can use the curb to rotate your car a little bit, like like in a initial D. Sometimes. <laughs> I would like to do that. That would be nice. You, what you can do is in the on the inside curb, you can put a gutter there, then you know, hook your wheel there. <laughs> if you can hook the inside of that curb, it can help you a little bit on turn. Yeah. You can do that the sec second last corner, you know, just cut yeah, the yeah, curb yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. hook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The second last curb is, uh, is a quite a, is a positive camber corner, and then actually it's easier if you take all the way inside. Uh, but then, well, okay, the only guy who is on. A lap is not really on the lap, just the lap isn't really on the lap, it's just there doing an outlap and then the flag is now dropped. So only one who's doing any lap time, I think is Felix Jong right now. Felix Jong is really the only one on a hot lap with an improvement. So uh four tenths off in the first sector. So really we need a bit more. And at the same time the sector two looks to be quite leisurely. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often that we say the car looks slow, but it does look both slow and then quite untidy at the same time. So probably the tires are not really in the operating time uh, window right now. So still a personal best. Let's see if he can climb at least in front of Lexus. That will help a lot for his team at least. Oh. So Pratama is reconnected. Oh, so um, nice. Yeah, yeah. Pratama so holds on to yeah. pole once again. Yeah. So this Whoa, is Felix Jung who will loose. come around the line. Let's see what left have he set. Two seven. Twenty eight. Oh, we look at twenty nine. Oh, so that's not this really too far. Left. That's really well. He's struggling. So if you see the car like that out of shape, uh, it probably the driver isn't really happy with the setup. <laughs> and uh, the more you push it, usually the worse it becomes, especially on yes. uh, on the race. So Felix Jung has only, I think, um, stay his course. Uh, I mean, uh, set a reference step for himself and then keep taking it, keep taking the time, and then hope the cars in front run into each other. It could happen in Okayama because there are a lot of um, medium speed corners that you can realistically hang it on the outside. So, um, we're looking at the, um, we're looking at the, uh, qualifying result. Pratama on pole with a 126.4. Four tenths after him is Luis Moreno. And then we have Russell Reyes, this time just 200 behind Moreno. So he's behind Pratama on the, I think on the outside. Just Lam doing a good job in front of Heilong again. The two finished very good in the last race and then they 
uh, keep up the performance this time. And then Paco Chan have an improvement. Um, only 5,000 of a second slower than Hayla in qualifying. <laughs> Ridiculous close. <laughs> so another 500 of him is the M class leader gen man. And then we have Jerry Ken. And then we also have uh, M class second, uh, run, uh, first run of driver, Liu Leng, uh, Peter Wong. As usual, Brandon Wong uh, squeezed out quite an okay lap in the end, eventually. And then we have uh, Haywood. Haywood um, with those two, Eris Chen, the lot, Alex Lee, Nixon Law, the two Lexus together. And then Felix Jung, quite, quite, low, be, uh, quite low compared to what he can do. And then Gary Lin again is here, but he's not really feeling the car, I guess, this season. So, not really the performance he can do. Um, Jira Park, the China, and then Andrew Wong. And at last, it's a new joiner uh, replacing, I think, uh, I forgot, sorry. Uh, Pakom is replacing the original driver in the another um, Corvette Pro Class from OVB Esports. So, one Manchuri pit stops um, between lap 16 to 24 and then straight to the flag for 40 laps quite simple really the, the guy who finished first wins <laughs> yeah so we are going to be in for i would say a good one hour of racing here at okayama so of course in real life uh, probably the most prolific series that comes here would be the super gt yeah. series and maybe sometimes the super formula as well so right now you've got the in some ways we can kind of think of it as the gt 300s that come here with all the gt 500s but yeah there you go it's, it's the gt 3s that we're, ha we're having here so we have a legion of racers front row uh once again uh, this race uh, and then we've got a jmx phantom car down in third and after that would be uh chester lum who sits in fourth position so one of the I think one of the numerous drivers that can really give the current top three drivers on the grid a good run for their money. So uh, <laughs> it will be exciting to see how those guys do. And we've got one of the more interesting Corvette racing cars that would seem to be the driver of... Hello. Gosh, I can't really see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hello. Hey, Esports racing. Uh, Hello. Uh, again, uh, still learning. Uh, still eventually getting closer to the uh, aliens in Asia. So... <laughs> that is that is the that is really usually the hardest part. I mean, it's, it's easy to be within two seconds, but then eventually to get within one second and half a second, that is the really make or break. I mean, a lot of drivers try to get to that level and then just find out what would just just take all your time and then all your life to do it. But then, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, congrats to Chester Lam and then Hei Lam, both very young, I think, just 22, 23 years of age, and then. Um, Holding the flag for the future of Chinese uh, esports drivers. Absolutely, yeah. Sim racing is definitely uh, emerging here in, in in Greater China, and it would definitely be great to see more, you know, fast drivers come out from from the area. It's definitely a good sign. Yeah, uh, I've got some of the other drivers further back behind. Uh, yeah, I look, I, I, re I really like this comic uh, manhwa. Yes. <laughs> We hope to have a uh, more uh, Taiwan list driver next year, because uh, this mm -hmm. year they really blow up in Taiwan in terms of both online and offline events. Uh, a lot of shops, a lot of simulation centers, and then also I noticed on the real race track, a lot of people have gotten a lot richer, and then a lot of new cars. Yeah, so all <laughs> those graphic cars you guys are buying are going directly to Taiwan. All those, all those money. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, prosperity is nice for everyone. Yeah. Meanwhile, here in Singapore, we got like we, well, motorsports. You had, you had a very good <laughs> GDP growth <laughs> from, yeah. all, from all the invested uh, investment money. So, yeah, but yeah. at the expense of fun, I guess. Like, yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> Are you allowed to say that or not? <laughs> oh, okay. So oh, man, the, the real fun takes place outside of Singapore, man. Ooh, That's a fact. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> everyone knows. Yes. Yeah. So here we have the second of the Wacko's M-Class car, Haywood. Uh, not really fit a car this morning, but I think a, a bit of setup tweaks had given him enough performance to stay in front of 
those two this time in front of Harris Chan. So quite interesting. Mm. Harris Chan this time not being the fastest in his team. And then we have the two Lexus. The Melbourne taxis. <laughs> nice. Love the Mel Melbourne taxis. Melbourne fake taxis. Yeah. Probably drive like drive like the Melbourne taxis as well. I'm not sure. <laughs> I never really like seen taxis in like Australia, like people all mm -hmm. have cars and something. So we have Felix Young here. And then the third, Garoline. Garoline actually I think is a very good driver because uh, last year in the Asia Pacific GT Championship, Peter Birch driving the same car. He's done really well. But then this year probably the tracks are not in his flavor. So two of the tie of uh, the eSports cars. Cool, cool, cool. Two Corvettes as well. And then Andrew Wong, the long CKK e racing team, where all his teammates are either be self to work. So we only have 30 seconds to the flag. So we will probably stick with Pratama at the start. And then uh, let's see what difference this time Moreno can make and stopping Reyes from getting his fourth win. So here we have the lights. Ooh, is it a jump start or not? It looks very fast start from uh, <laughs> Protama. And then, uh, yes. whoa! Moreno not really covering Reyes enough, so Reyes has sneak into um, P2. Uh, Alexis has spun in the back. The rest of the cars looks good, so we are looking at cars that are going side by side into this very wide hairpin. And then with Kotai's, so probably on Kotai you should stick to the tightest line possible and then straighten your exit just to protect yourself into this long, long straight. The race already had to have like a full brightness. And then Cheslin tried to stick his nose in into this trio of Southeast Asian elite sim racing drivers. So right here is <laughs> got his P2 cleared Moreno already. But then uh, Pratama has got a very comfortable one second gap and he can just continue doing his own thing. So one thing, where's Jemen? Why is Jemen behind Liu Lang? Yeah, I was wondering, he was qualified quite far up though, just now. Yeah, mm, Something then, must have happened. Yeah, but we didn't see any like big crashes, uh, but... I think there, there might be one now. <laughs> there might be one Eris Chen right now. Uh, what's, what happened with Eris Chen? Oh, he's, well, he's in the pits directly, so... Something happened. Um, and let's see, is German, does any German have any damage? Is German right now is, oh my oh. god, he lost it. I think he, whoa, his door has blew open. <laughs> I think he wants to jump oh out of the car god. quickly. Yeah, can he close the door now? Well, he can close <laughs> in the pit and then close the door. Whoa, that is... <laughs> whoa. <laughs> that is That's really, my first time seeing something like that. I've never seen something like that in sim racing. That is too <laughs> realistic. And then we have here Tenat, also on Kota's, don't return the track like this. Don't oh. <laughs> rejoin the track like this. So this Kotas is catching everyone out. Except the three other uh, four in the front, of course. The four in the front have no trouble with this car. And then we have here basically the three Wako Sky is in a, like a meat meatball, we say. Uh, like a like a fish ball. <laughs> so on the chain. <laughs> so but you see yeah, Brandon Wong trying to attack. Who is that? Liu Lan? Well he's probably this Liu Leung has to protect his lead in M class. He's not gonna try something like too risky. So it's a good time to bully him a bit. So for Brandon Wong as well. So they are not in the same class, so it doesn't matter if they change position. But Liu Leung thinks he has the pace, so he will do well to just keep Brandon behind him and then just take him out of the equation for a bit. Yeah, so we're now into the third lap of racing here at Okayama, and already we do have... I would say we, ha we have quite a huge shuffle of positions, uh, mostly through the midfield, uh, around the area. And of course, the, the drivers up front uh, kind of still remain the top three, top three, four, maybe even five guys. These five guys uh, up, up in the top five, they've remained, but everyone else seems to have kind of been jumbled around just a slight bit, but racing still goes on nonetheless. Uh, 
Heilion continues to sit in fifth position ahead of Paco Chan and uh yeah, I think uh, the game here, most importantly, is to try to re remain in the slipstream stream as much as possible. Yeah, we're looking at a very fortunate first lap for Nixon, Law and Alex Lee. Both the Lexus are now second and third in class, so probably a double podium, po possibly. And the immediate threat behind him is four seconds behind in the form of those two. And then also Haywood. Haywood again is messing with another GTR again. This time not estrogen, but this time with those two. Um, I'm okay. Uh, we didn't have like actual like pre-race strategies for this, but it doesn't matter in this kind of situation really. <laughs> if he can <laughs> keep a hot head, then it's the best. Uh, no, no, keep a calm head, then it's the best. But if not, well, let's <laughs> see who, who came up better. So a little bit of damage on the front end here. Yeah, quite a fair bit of damage here. Uh, of course, I, I think one thing that, that I find with racing here at, uh, at at Okayama is that the track is not always the grippiest. It's quite easy to spin out yeah, yeah. Uh, here at Okayama at times. So, uh, yeah, that, that's something to keep in mind. So, Heywood Tui with uh, it's just really really nice Mosa wheelbase there. So, uh, yeah. yeah, great. Uh, a good, uh, good wheel set for people trying to get into the direct drive market. He's and using the R9 in full, ah, full okay. force and also wow. full force in the game so he used <laughs> quite heavy steering wheel for, for, for a guy that small yeah uh, handling quite well indeed uh, of course yeah, with yeah. Uh, quite big steering wheel though in, in proportion so right <laughs> now the M class car actually catching up to Brandon for some reason Brandon has fallen off the back of Leland by 4 seconds and then right now is right in front of Nixon and then we see the emergency like uh, the, the hustle light is flashing on Brandon's car so I'm not sure if he have any trouble but the fact that he's now dropped off Leo Lam means that Leo Lam has all the space to just do his own thing so oh the car's bumped. oh someone's in the wall Brandon Wong has someone's out, in the wall. Of the, out of the happen oh, no. so probably uh, tire, tire are not the best. Probably have a spin, mm -hmm. and then that makes your car even looser. So more spin, one's one spin leads to more spin, and right now, already Gary Lynn is behind him already. So different fortune between Chester Lamb and Brandon Wong. So again, yeah, so battling yeah. continues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Back continues. with Chester Lamb. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So last race already see Chester Lamb. Uh, challenging Moreno and overtaking him last race uh, this race you gotta see it again and looks like Moreno actually I think he has pace but whether his car is in this state the, the most comfortable uh, condition for him not sure but Chess Lamb is picking his spot and then uh, you see the car has still quite decent rotation on the entry if you can have a rotation into the hairpins, you can gain a, a lot of time in front of, uh, before the apex. Yeah, definitely. And I find that the, at, at least with the third sector of the Okayama circuit, it gets really quite technical. Uh, you, you've got that infield section where it's just kind of, especially this part as well, it's uh, hairpin after hairpin. So yeah. it's important for the drivers to I guess scrap as little speed off as possible, but we do have a battling between teammates, so this between two cars that look exactly the same yeah, and probably so, drive exactly well, the same one, as well. One has slightly more damage, and that's usually <laughs> Alex Lee's car. <laughs> right. so usually have full damage in that one, but right now uh, at least next time has a very clean car, and behind him is Jerry Ken, but Jerry Ken isn't really battling for their position. Um, they're in different classes. Mm. But then at the same time, um, you don't want to just give people track position on a track this narrow. So this is the battle between the teammates and then behind them we have Dojo and Haywood still are fighting out. Haywood has caught up with Dojo but at the same time Eris Chen is, is arriving. So again a reverse, uh, a reverse order in terms of pace seems to be. 
And let's see if possibly those two can actually catch up to the Lexus duel. And then we have a six car battle. That would be nice. So, hey, we're mm -hmm. at lunch here. A big lunch. A switchback. He's now again in the, in the inside. Well, that's actually quite smart. I mean, he overshoot the first part. Oh, my God. Oh. He's a teammate. I think it's a tussle behind, between teammates or either between Jerry Ken and Alex Lee. Could be. And now we have here Eris Chen. <laughs> I think okay, side by side between the. Not really the good. Oh, tight squeeze here, but Very tight I think squeeze, those two so. manages to make, make it work. Yeah, but <laughs> I'll take it too. Jerry Ken in front is like really, really off pace in those corners. I'm not sure what is happening with his car. But anyway, right now. Uh, those two, Hayward Eris has just taken over the podium spot. So Lexus went from a very quite short sure second and third to really right now only a second in in class. So those two here really is quite a bit faster than Jerry Ken in front, and that is quite interesting. And meanwhile, we're looking at the battle at the front, Reyes is not keeping up with Pratama, so as long as Pratama doesn't do anything silly, I think at least has a very good chance to keep in the lead, uh, at least uh, till the pit stop. So Hayward Trey has a very strong move into, I think that is turn 4, and then cleared those two, and right now Eris Chan and those two has to figure out who goes first, so they decided Eris Chan is the faster car. And then those two can just hang back a little bit uh, and then see what they can do together. Yeah, so re really a, a, lot of, a lot of racing here, at the, especially at the second half of the track, it's a lot about uh, swapping positions or either kind of get, being at the right place at the right time. So at different moments, you, you can kind of take, take turns having different positions along the track. Uh, uh, of course, that's given that uh, this part of the track is very, very technical. So, Aris Chan, of course, has the has taken the position from those two at this point, while uh, Haywood continues to lead the rest of this battle pack uh, at this point. We do have Brandon Wong, who still hangs behind uh, the three M M class cars. So, I think he, he needs to perhaps scheme a way to, I guess, make the overtaking moves work. So, uh, yeah, that's that. So those two continues to sit in 13th, and I think there is a Brenda Wong who might- Oh, oh, okay. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, that, that was an incident. Ah, uh, I think Brenda Wong has spun around. Yep, I think almost caught those two there. I don't think that's initiated by anyone. That's just a, an honest mistake, I think. And uh, mm -hmm. there's those two's re reaction <laughs> time. It's really fast, and then <laughs> I just caught him dodging the can in front and then have a laugh about it right now. So right now, we have Nixon and Haywood in the podium, and then the three SYM cars are all actually still within distance to Haywood. So, Eris Chen has to pick up the pace and then track all the teammates together. So, what happened with Nixon? Nixon, what happened? Nixon had he spun on his own or when why so his car is also the car doesn't look good man. doesn't look good oh my god it went <sighs> went from like great to worst for this team again <laughs> unfortunately but the car still looks drivable at least i'll say mm -hmm. in the front of the two so uh, two gtls and then two lexus uh, front and back so this this battle is just i mean this is just like phase one <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fighting again uh, with this. Yeah. As we see uh, last time in M class, the, the standing changed a lot throughout the race. And then we have two DNF already one from Jam and a run from Felix Jung. So, oh, a knock to the team, really. I see they prepared quite a lot for this race. And they both, I think, like this track, but not really working out for this team right now. And that would be affect the team standing a lot going to the last race. Yeah, so we've come towards the quarter point of the race, and uh, if I'm not wrong, I think the drivers will have to pit sometime later on. So uh, it will be interesting to see how the drivers handle their tire management, especially at a mm. track like okay, man, someone's gone out wide there. That's the uh, Corvette of. Uh, I think that's uh, 
Because mm -hmm. there are two Probably. cars up being left, and that is one of those. So, so Luis Moreno yeah. continues. Luis Moreno is keeping up with Reyes. So quite comfortably also, I think. So the win looks safe, but it would be good to take a lot of points off Reyes' hands to give Pratama a chance into the final round, which is a double point race. So effectively, we still have two races <laughs> well, for points to get. So here you see Reyes breaking the draft. As you say, drafting is a big thing on this track, and he's trying to break the draft. And we'll see Chester Lamb quite a bit of distance behind, but still uh, in touch. At least you can see the tail light. You can see very interesting elevation on this track. You can see the cars passing down the main straight in the back. Yeah, quite interesting because otherwise the track is relatively flat, but you still have a bit of uh, up and down uh, like that. <laughs> so so Paco Chan yeah. continues in six. Yeah, Paco Chen and Peter Wong, the two are con Mr. Consistent. Again, very consistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, very important. And then actually, Pace Wise looks to have the, have, uh, the measure of K Lam. Oh, oh. Bit, mm, that's what that you was don't close. want. <laughs> that's what you don't want because the left side tires are the one that is loaded. And then if you slide a little bit consecutively in a few turns, uh, that might be the point of no return. Very bright so, lights on the Ferrari, really. <laughs> yeah, I think the Ferrari behind though doesn't have lights on, so yeah, it's interesting. So Paco Chan continues to lead uh, Peter Wong, both drivers being uh, teammates and in the pro class. So both of them handling the car very nicely there. So here, all by his own, not really minding anyone's business is Neola. That is what he wanted, really. <laughs> all he mm. wants to do is this, just Po, uh, po to flat, po to flat, po to flat. Mm -hmm. Get his monkey off his back. So this is the first year uh, after joining Marcus Drift Label for three years. This is the first year he's got a win for himself and for the team. It might be the first championship as well. So fingers crossed. Yeah, that, 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 that'll be great if it happens. So absolutely. Um, by the way, Jay, uh, I can't help but notice that there are a lot of uh, banners around the track for SimGrid. Uh, can you perhaps tell me more about uh, this engagement that you're, you're having with yeah, uh, SimGrid? So and the, the long story is uh, SRO eSport, as we know it, has been uh, reorganized into a community-based uh, series. Uh, so everyone can... Um, become a host and then if they have enough momentum, enough races, enough members, they can have a official SRO uh, nomination to the World Finals. So the World Finals is going to happen on the real track, uh, I think most popular in Europe, uh, alongside the SRO GT3 races where all the top drivers will go to their in-person and then have an in-person event to win a grand prize. So uh, EPP, we're trying to give that route uh, into that competition uh, for Asian drivers, uh, pan-Asian drivers. Uh, it's still a kind of work in progress because they, they released this um, plan so late. Uh, we're still working uh -huh. on it. So we hopefully you want to do a few uh, a mini series to warm up the drivers and then a proper, probably four to five race season to nominate two drivers to eventually would go to Europe and then uh, to get either educated or, or, or <laughs> humble <laughs> or if you're Dylan 10 you might beat them so <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely yes, yeah. Yes. so really just uh, yeah we're offering one 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 space uh, beside Dylan 10 <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great yeah, it would be on ACC yeah. as well so I have ah, okay. I have actually not driven the new physics uh, or the new matter so um, probably uh, would be a more interesting playing ground for people who uh, has been paying time and then also there's a new number a notch driver is out on ACC mm -hmm. oh a bit of oh. uh, uh, Gary Lynn but still not really uh, troubling his um, pace so Moreno here uh, so yeah it's gonna be ACC probably we'll do something like a VLN notch driver race would be everyone will be happy uh, mm -hmm. and then let's see who we can find to go to Europe this year, I think sometime in September. 
No, that's quite soon. So the the time window to uh, yes, it is. Yeah, it's quite a tight time window that you guys are working with. Well, uh, I'm happy for you guys since it, you know SR is a very big uh, brand name in sim uh, in sim racing uh, period, and yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting that uh, the the guy uh, that SR are kind of like uh, putting this towards the community. I think that's a great that's a great opportunity to showcase like some of the even the community organizers like yourselves here in Asia to really showcase uh, all of that. Uh, and I certainly wish you the best in identifying the best sim racers uh, apart from Dylan Tan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the best racers outside of Dylan Tan is a is a huge mm. honor. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I think yeah, it, it, indeed. Uh, like uh, sim racing, a lot of organizers actually I think had learned a lot from the boom period, either from iRacing or uh, SRO Esports. Like uh, during the pandemic, we see like big production put into like sim racing broadcast and I think we definitely all learn a lot from those uh, workflows uh, the, the, the tech they develop mm -hmm. and that's actually huge absolutely so we continue to observe Luis Moreno set in third uh, sitting behind uh, Russell Reyes so remember Moreno Luis Moreno did Start off in second in qualifying, but Russell, uh, but I guess during the race start, Russell Reyes did get that jump on Luis Moreno, so Russell Reyes currently sits in second. So we now have a look at some of the battling that's going on uh, in the M class. This is I I I kind of see a lot of yeah a lot of Nissan GTRs yeah, here in the, the in entire, the, M class. the entire pack of GTRs are all together. <laughs> so this time Caroline has some pace, really. They have some pace, uh, and then those two is leading i think by the qualifying time this race should be uh, he is the lead driver and then eris chan uh not 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 struggling right not struggling but uh, not as sharp as the other guys maybe he doesn't need really to mm -hmm. be like pushing full pace right now because i think there should be some team order in place uh right now it's, again again they have um secure one car on the podium if they finish like this so whether the car will be those two or Galilee or Aris Chen is really up to their debate so they all have like headphones as you're talking to each other and then uh, definitely the logical thing that we put Aris Chen on top but with uh, Jen Man and uh, Felix Jong out of the picture they have a bit more breathing room Yeah, so, well, dude, I, I just can't get over the, the whole image. Th three GTRs in a queue, like, queued up together, bunched up together. That, that's really quite a sight. Oh, we do have a potential battle here between Russell Reyes and uh, Luis Moreno. So this is the battle for second position. Luis Moreno takes, try to take the outside line uh, along that right hairpin. Uh, continuing along a series of other corners. Yeah, so that was half a chance really, that was, that was half a chance. I think Moreno almost committed to it, but then uh, Reyes has put his elbow out at the apex. So uh, Moreno couldn't really stick to him side by side, and then he has chosen to again follow the leader for a bit until the next big chance uh, again from, I think, turn four, next lap. And we are also almost in the pit window, so there's also an option to pit first. Uh, mm -hmm. But then, as, as usual, the, the overcut is strong here, especially with the tire temps. So if your tires is working properly, you run it till fairly late, till the uh, pit stop window. We we'll see here, Moreno has quite positive like turning. You see the car is turning well, even in the third here. So if he has the good run, and I, I think the difference is because Moreno finished P5 last race, his car is quite a bit lighter than Reyes around 16 kg like that so that is gonna be a difference okay so both guys are very good exit reyes has a very good exit trying to break the drop again <laughs> very pro 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 driver move and then moreno not really close enough or it's it he's gonna put his front in took a look and i think better of it like Yeah, so there was a great uh, attempt at trying to get an get an overtaking move done by Luis Moreno on Russell Reyes, but uh, yeah, I, I think it, it does quite get quite difficult sometimes overtaking here at the Okayama, especially if you're not either you're not close enough or you're you're not able to get your car in the right placement. 
uh, to make an overtaking move, uh, Neil dialed in, uh, Neil nailed in there. So, uh, yeah, uh, Jarvis, uh, Bo, uh, Luis Moreno still continues to trail, uh, trail along uh, Russell Reyes as they take on Okayama once again. Uh, we are, I guess, within the pit window at this very moment, so drivers should be making their moves into the pits uh, at this time, certainly. Yeah, there's and seven laps of pit window where you can uh, do your pit stops. If you are really stuck behind someone, like Gary, oh, Ericsson, actually, Ericsson has passed both his teammates and then now has clean air. So probably the team order has already been applied. And he is only four seconds from him. So mm. definitely the hunt is on. And here we see Alex Lee trying to lap Andrew Wong. Andrew Wong still running. He's still at the points, really. Andrew Wong finding it very difficult to score a point this season. But then, it's not really an easy grid to be with. So something happened. Peter Wong has passed Helen, and then Paco Chen has already passed Helen. Helen was in front of Paco Chen, and right now, he's dropped two places for some reason. But he's coming back. He's attacking. We wash out a bit of the hairpin. Yeah, sometimes that's get a little bit difficult to handle uh, the car, especially at those sectors. Ooh. As we do have Peter Wong going into the pits. Yeah, Wong, uh, I tell you, the, yeah, the pit was... entry here at Okayama is, is sometimes very dodgy. <laughs> yeah, but luckily he was already like trapped inside of that corner already, so might as well. Make a pit stop and then mm -hmm. try to come up better. So, Leo Lang here, clean up, running clean air, still in front of Jerry Ken. So, whoa, definitely impressive. I mean, if you're an M driver, if you are consistently finishing like overall in top six and top seven, you definitely make a case for yourself. So, Moreno has pitted or either he has spun, whatever. No, 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 no. I think just a timing table thing. <laughs> yeah, it's just a timing table thing. So maybe momentarily at the game things, uh, Moreno was in front for a slight moment, but then yeah, the real the real standing still stays the same. Moreno, Reyes together. Neither one of those choose to pit, so. If they pit at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> we might have a pit lane battle yeah, later yeah, on. Let's battle, let's like, see. Yeah, I hope they'll pit at the same time. Then we'll we'll see them take this battle into the pits. But uh, otherwise, uh, Russell Reyes still leads uh, Luis Moreno. But of course, we do have a Moreno Pratama who's so far ahead. Uh, actually, not as far ahead as like the previous races, but six seconds still quite a uh, remarkable lead ahead of the rest of the drivers. I, I wonder if Dylan Tan comes and race right. Where on the grid will he be? Well, I mean, will he be EGT season one was uh, back in 2000, uh, I think it's 19. We did on an ACC and Dylan 10 won all of the races. So. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, yeah that, that, that was, I think that's I think... what happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think we can deduce uh, the that answer was, then. That was Dylan 10 back then. And, ah, yeah. <laughs> now his power level is, uh, I'm not sure. Multi oh, even multiplier, higher, right? yeah. <laughs> multiplier, yeah. Multiplier, a couple. Yeah, so, I mean, back in the day, the, the standard for Asian drivers compared to Europeans are usually like uh, five to six tens to the top. Mm -hmm. But the end 10, I think, is right now about two to three tens from the absolute best European. Oh, Asian that's driver. great. That's yeah, great. So that's, that's great still. That's, uh, that's what we consider on Hillman. Uh, yeah. But mm -hmm. the great thing is, yeah. We still, we still see him, we can still race with him sometimes in Asian series, but then we can measure us up against him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess a lot of Asian drivers uh, are capable of, of doing uh, like four to five tens within European times right now. That's the standard for yeah. Asian drivers right now. So really high. So don't be discouraged if you feel like you're not catching these guys, but they are also improving every day. <laughs> So 
So here, a non non position battle. Uh, Jerry Cam, right. Leo Lang, Young Bloods, uh, Hot Hats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the fastest yeah. Corvette, uh, yeah, battling for the fastest Corvette. Yeah, That's both right. of them Corvettes, both yeah. very fast. Yeah. yeah. So, mm, hopefully, they can like uh, take a different strategy and then pit at different times and then separate themselves a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Lane has passed yeah. Aris Chen. Aris Chen has pitted, and then Hayward is still going. So Hayward was once for a while only two or so seconds in front of Aris. Aris has made a bit of progress. But then uh, he's pitted earlier, so uh, Hayward can have a few very good fast over that looks like a fast lap using all the line, and then it's a good uh, progression as well because um, Hayward has, I would say, actually Hayward has a very um, good instinct, but then his understanding of how to make a car fast isn't really there yet because he's quite young. So, with a fifth point, just uh, with a little help from his. Pro class teammates, uh, he's able to find a bit of pace, and then right now, guarding the rear of Leola, uh, probably first podium in this season, hopefully. So Moreno has pitted. Reyes is now clear, but then he's already eight seconds behind Pratama. So Pratama absolutely faultless, and then dominating really. Girapat has a stop and go penalty for spitting in the pits. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a good learning experience because raising is sometimes just not making mistakes, you know. Yeah, I think that's uh, quite a big part with with uh, sim racing, especially. You you just want to keep yourself on on all fours, facing the right way up, and sometimes that's just good enough to take you to the finish. Of course, if you're a faster driver, then of course you going fast is way. You have to do. Oh, Luis Moreno has dropped a couple of positions. I think that's cause maybe Luis Moreno has just pitted. pitted yes. Perhaps. This is his outlap. So we're yeah. looking at Moreno's outlap, and in front of him is Dose Chiu. I think 85 is Dose Chiu. And then further in front of him is Parker Chan. So Andrew Wong has a drive through for pit lane speeding. Another, <laughs> another <laughs> careless mistakes. <laughs> so um, Moreno have a free pass. Oh my god. Dose Chiu has been very, oh. very helpful very gentle and then also Paco Chen has gone into the pits for his pit stop so we're looking at clear track for Moreno and then hopefully a very fast outlap Let's see if we can close or even pass Reyes let's look at Reyes if there's there like any traffic Reyes has just came out of the pits I think so this is his outlap and then we see Moreno around three seconds behind. So Reyes is the one who gained the votes from this uh, pit stop. But then at the same time, his ties are still relatively cold. So this lap might be advantage Moreno still. But in front of him, we see 726. That is Peter Wong who had pitted. So uh, Haywood also has pitted. So we are looking at Eris Chan versus Haywood Haywood is already exceeded pit so Haywood has extended the pit uh, the advantage a lot from the pit stops so either Eris Chen has taken out on fuel or changed times that could be the only reason that the gap is now this huge yeah that's quite a huge gap so yeah a couple of drivers who've already made the 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 moves in the, for the pit window, and some drivers who've yet to do that. So, uh, I think the positions should start to equalize themselves once the pit window uh, closes. Uh, but at this point, uh, I think that it would also seem that the drivers have all kind of gone spaced out, uh, and everyone is kind of on their own at this point. No particular battles ongoing at this point, perhaps. Yeah, not really. So we can take a chance to yeah. look at some of the drivers with us. Tenat last time, oh, we didn't really see his face. Uh, we see a steering wheel. Oh, okay. This time. It's oh, nice. Yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> yeah, so still learning. We can see he's still like struggling a bit with the car. So <laughs> still learning. Um, ooh, very, very <laughs> hairy. So uh, we've them done the TC setting on this car. So there's two very aggressive setting, and then there's one that is totally 
safe and slow. So it's, it's still down to the driver to control the right field quite a lot. So Halo has taken the drive through. He's taken the drive through for speeding or something. I missed the, the first penalty, but Halo has taken a drive through. And then that means his chance for the pro class finish is, well, not really healthy right now. But at the same time, Peter Wong is still behind him for some reason. So what happened with Peter Wong, I'm not sure. Yeah. The interesting things that probably happened. So Peter Wong, oh, I think he's coming under some pressure from a car. Oh yeah, the lap traffic, lap traffic. Yeah, so that's the uh, Mercedes of uh, one of the LOR drivers making his way across. Yeah. I didn't catch a penalty for Peter Wong, but he lost a lot of time in the pits. So, did he accidentally put a new tire or put a lot of fuel? I'm not sure. But really, he's quite a bit further from what he should be. Mm -hmm. Even further than Hayler, who had taken another drive through. So, really, he's quite, quite a long way from the top right now. So, Paco Chen has to, well, protect his team's uh, standing. And then uh, also, but today, today we didn't see any of the passionate uh, crazy cars scoring any points, so that should be a good race for Watkins. So we've passed the halfway point of racing here, so drivers still have plenty of opportunities to, to I guess, uh, continue making their moves here in the race uh, but of course uh, they've got 16 laps of racing to go so uh, and, and the fact that the cars are kind of a bit spaced out now means that I, I guess everyone has kind of settled into their positions in some ways so if we want to try to find some battles that, that uh, to, to spot uh, we'll probably have to do a bit of uh, no searching so Hayley once again he's currently in 8th mm, pro class driver his yeah. next car in front is seventh, but it's quite a fair gap. So uh, we can have a look at how he handles. Oh, a bit slightly there. That's a downhill left hander, so it's quite easy to, I guess, lose your rear end if you're not careful. So taking upon uh, some of the other, some of the final corners as well. You can kind of see from this perspective that the final sector of Okayama does get quite technical, uh, especially this right hander. You you are deciding between using second gear or maybe even first gear sometimes if you're if you're lazy. <laughs> Yeah, so we're talking about battles on track. Uh, this is not really for position, but this is a close fight from two drivers who is like very equal in pace this weekend. We also keep an mm. eye on Reyes and Moreno because the gap right now is only one second. But then as well. long as Cam further down, <laughs> we'll get back onto it. <laughs> so here we have, uh, I think Jerry Ken knows he doesn't have really much to gain, but uh, if he's stuck, Behind uh, Liu Lang, Hei Lang should be very quickly catch up to these two. Uh, we see a three-way Corvette battle. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, see, so it's down to eight tenths with a bit of help of traffic from GTR. <laughs> <laughs> Always good, you know, oh, the lap traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lapping traffic, you can, you can. It can come both ways, you know. Sometimes it can be to your advantage. Sometimes it can be against your advantage. But uh, it, uh, I think, in, in general, it should be. Uh, in, in general, I think you know you just have to know how to manage uh, the traffic as it comes. So Luis Moreno back in third, where I think where he's been for most of the race. He definitely wants to try to close the gap with Russell Reyes, but Russell Reyes is uh, still, I would say, six, seven tenths of a second ahead. So. A bit of effort that Luis Moreno has to continue to put in if he wants to try to push and close uh, this gap off. So Luis Moreno continues to be in the trail of Russell Reyes as they come upon uh, the second sector of Okayama circuit. And that's another lap traffic, the fake taxi uh, Lexus uh, yeah. in front. So. Taxi, <laughs> and then there's further other cars in front as well. There's a mm -hmm. lap traffic. I mean, it's a, it's a very... Um, distinctive feature when you look at like cheap super gt races you often see a car of bunch up all together trying to figure out where to pass uh it's even harder when you are all in the same class of cars because you don't really have that big of a delta uh, compared to the car like cars in front so if the car in front doesn't give you space that really not much you can do 
So you see taxis, and then see <laughs> four tents between Moreno and Reyes. So it's hugely important where the um, the taxi give give way. Uh, taxi <laughs> usually give way. <laughs> Uh, we need to find the the number to call to, to hail the taxi. Uh, we can make yes. a phone call and the taxi will go away. <laughs> <laughs> so you see Reyes here flashing the headlights. They are oh, spamming the flash button. Uh, not bad. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so here you see Reyes Inside. cleared and then Moreno also cleared. No, not really. He had a bit of e uh, connection issue here. His car dropped off a little bit. For some reason, mm. and then we see our uh, taxi has spun. Oh, it spun unfortunately. And then behind there is a chain there. of behind there is a chain of cars. <laughs> Just of them trying to lap someone. Just them trying to lap uh, Peter Wong, I think. And then also just lap another of the GTRs. A lot of GTRs here on this track, very prominent. And then uh, he's also a very uh, safe P4. In class, yeah, in Chester Lam is yeah, Paco Chen doing good job, and then we have here this non battle battle, uh, <laughs> Leo Lan, and then with Jerry Ken. Jerry Ken is a past Leo Lan, so there's a gap there, and then now Hei Lang is well, another non positional battle, and at the same time, the, the, the gap between Reyes and Moreno has spread a little bit now that they've both cleared all the traffic. Oh, that's a Corvette who's tried to go along the outside, but Hei oh, has, didn't. Halo yeah. has spun, I think. Hei yeah, that, that, that move didn't yeah, go that well. He had done a very slidey hairpin. He's still running, though. Caught the car and then still <laughs> running, but that is not going to help the Titan. James. Yeah, the, the, once you lose tire temperatures, it, it kind of affects your, <clears throat> your pace for the next uh, immediate few moments. Uh, but Hei Leon continues to sit in eighth, and sometimes you, sometimes the most interesting battles, right, can even be bad, ba uh, non-position battles, like, like especially this one between Liu Leong and Hei Leong. Yeah. Uh, so here we have a very important position battle. <laughs> they have to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. So once in a while we'll check back on this, guys. Russell Reyes doesn't look to be really pressure of us. His line has been very consistent. Uh, very economical driving, I'd say. Hmm. So I, I think Russell Reyes has been under quite some pressure all race long, you know, considering that he's been holding off uh, his friend there, Luis Moreno, in third, so for a majority of the race, uh, in, in, I, I would imagine. Uh, but I think uh, so far, uh, Russell Reyes has been doing a fantastic job holding up strong there in eighth, but also quite a long distance be behind the race leader, Moreno Pratama, who, you know, sometimes when you have a driver who's alone, Mm -hmm. it, uh, up top, right? Uh, sometimes you, you know, it, it kind of is an indication that he's he's too far ahead. It's difficult to to catch him, and I think the focus should just be on holding your ground uh, all the way to to the finish of the race. I mean, the best you can do is just drive your best lap, lap after lap. Just, so just ignore that gap and then just do your best. That's all you can do in the real. So trying to see if there's any more action, but right now, uh, yeah, both both Russell Reyes and Luis Moreno continuing along the long the longest stretch here at Okayama before coming upon some super tight hairpins, uh, right here. So, so actually, we have a look yeah. at there's a, this is not really a battle, but uh, mm. Gary Lean and Peter Wong for some reason on the same part of the track uh, should not be. Uh, should be different class, different pace, but then Gerlin uh, found a little pace and then Peter Wong for some reason has dropped back and then his car looks clean though, so either he has uh, accidentally fixed the damage <laughs> time, or yeah, not sure what happened, but right now they're together and this is the closest pack of cars on track so far until we see Halo and then they alone get really close quarter So this is closer, we have a traffic in front oh. of the Corvette and then we are now just only three tenths between the two drivers. So let's see. Oh the low 
all goals you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful stuff there. Yeah, Luis so Moreno can He has time to look at the screen on the left. I'm not sure what is on the left, but he has time to look at it. Well, so Reyes has gone deep and then gone back out. It is a defensive strategy because uh, if you've gone deep into the hairpin, there's no way the kite in front can dive you. Oh my god, oh. there's a touch. Definitely there's a touch. And you see a cool side by side. There's no use <laughs> flashing when you're side by side, really. Oh, okay, yeah. so they're not doing. Oh, leaning. right. That, that's a so very concerted now, attempt. Yep, so Reyes again is an inside pushing it a bit wider, but then Russell uh, Moreno has a traction on the outside line. So again, side by side, you have to fall in a single profile here. Whoa. Well, so you see Moreno get a little bit edgy and then it's time to put a mood on and then see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's heating up. The, this battle is heating up uh, Luis Moreno along the outside, which will probably then well, it was supposed to be the inside of the subsequent corner, but uh, it wasn't. Yeah, couldn't so couldn't be pulled off there. The line is really quite, quite yeah. like, not very grippy, and then. Uh, but still, he has a quite a good run. He has a very good exit traction, I would say. Mm. So he forced Reyes to keep defending at the entry. Uh, Russell Reyes, of course, is quite still very capable of the exit, but at the same time, his car is slightly heavier from the ballast, and then Moreno oh. has the slip stream, and then there's also another traffic <laughs> in front, so it's all heating up. And then at the same time, you see chest lamp behind us really getting closer, but little by little. So, okay. Russell Reyes has a very good strategy in the heaven. That is to go deep and then just force the car to go wide, the other car to go wide. And that relieved a lot of pressure. So we're now in the very tight third sector, and then Reyes has decided to get a dive on the car in front, clear them, and then also uh, Moreno also cleared the, uh, the Corvette. So again, tension has been released for, uh, <laughs> for a brief moment. Yeah. Eight laps of racing to go, uh, so not much time. I would say not a, not a entirely uh, not a whole lot of time left for the drivers to make their moves. So, I think Luis Moreno will continue to sit with uh, Russell Reyes, I guess, through to the end of the race. And uh, well, Chester Lam is quite uh, can't really be seen in this shot, so I think it's quite a quite a distance behind. It's five seconds. Uh, five seconds isn't a yeah. lot if you say if you if you say you can stick within five seconds of Russell Reyes with the last few races, mm. you're probably like P two. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah so <laughs> definitely, is a, there's hope. There's hope in catching the cars in front, and as long as they mm. like keep doing this, <laughs> like keep defending each other. I see yeah, Chester mm. back there. He's still reserving his headlights for when he really needs it. So <laughs> hopeful, he's hopeful. Eight laps mm. ago. So the action still continues. We come towards the twistier section of Okayama, and we'll see if Moreno will, Luis Moreno will kind of, uh, I guess, try try to go for and <laughs> try to restart his attempt at. And I guess going for some overtaking moves. So back uh, around the final couple of quarters, once again, Luis Moreno, Russell Reyes uh, at, at this point. It's quite interesting watching these guys fighting out on... No, we don't really do like Okayama a lot on other platforms, unless you do iRacing. So very interesting looking at this. Uh, another look, not really a real attempt, but uh, enough to put Russell Reyes on a tighter entry line and then force him to change his tempo for the S's. But Reyes, has, Reyes has very good, I would say his car is like really good um, consistency, I would say. His turn in, his, his apex are usually very consistent, which means it's very hard to offset him and then uh, to get a run out of the corner. So again, here, even with a slip stream, if Russell Reyes has, does his like, usual thing uh, to uh, pack it down the middle and overshoot it a bit, there's really not much Moreno can do. Yeah, coming upon some of the dodgier sections of the track once again, uh, Luis Moreno looks ever so close, <laughs> tries to come ever so close to, to, to Russell Reyes. 
uh, yeah, we can we can see Luis Moreno's uh, absolutely very intent there in trying to find a uh, window of opportunity through uh, Russell Reyes. So they continue to remain uh, within uh, arm's length of each other. Yeah, I just noticed up upon the final corners. His hair is black again, so he was born for mm -hmm. a bit, I remember. But now his hair is black again. I think it's probably the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, yeah. when he's showing the photos, his hair is like warm. So, ah. uh, it's a cool look. So, probably uh, <laughs> with black hair, no, probably uh, uh, a bit slower. <laughs> like the mm. Alex Elbon effect. Hey, uh, <laughs> good idea. So, uh, Luis Moreno. Yes, yeah, Reyes had a fair clear run in turn two and then a bit of dirty air for Moreno. So, uh, the gap has been widened a bit. And then, but this corner, I think, at entry, uh, Moreno is slightly faster. So another GTR in front for traffic. Hopefully we get to that quite soon. Jerry Ken and Haylam has just switched position for some reason. Uh, Jerry Ken. Oh, I think Haylam has something happen to him. <laughs> He's quite far behind, and then uh, Dylan has let Haylam through as well. So no, no, not really any reason to try to stack up to the man. Let's see what's the traffic in front traffic that is in GTR. I'm not sure which one it is right now, but Erechen again has found himself in third place in M class. Mm -hmm. uh, absolute consistency, uh, four races, four third places. Okay. A bit of a curb hopping for the uh, Audi. Yeah, these Audi machines, they're, they're a bit more nimble than the Mercedes cars, but uh, a bit more nimble, but uh, at the same time, the Mercedes are th that bit more stable. So at a track like Okayama, I think it's there's a place for both cars. So yeah. I think that's where you would see, supposedly Russell Reyes would, would, would kind of fare better at the latter se segments of the track. But uh, again, right now, we, we do have the fastest drivers here. And fast, fast drivers, they are able to adapt to any car that you throw at them. So... Uh, <laughs> I I think uh, that shouldn't play too much of a factor at this point. Uh, I think Russell Reyes just opened the window a bit there, going into the right hairpin, but uh, yeah, going a bit deep in the corner, but managing to hold the line well through towards the final sector once again. Russell Reyes continues to lead Luis Moreno through the final four quarters. Yeah, see, actually, and... throughout all this battle, actually, they have pulled a bit of gap from Chester Lamb, so Chester Lamb is now six seconds behind. So even though they are still battling, they're not really giving up too much in terms of pace. Yeah, and I think the window of opportunity is closing for Luis Moreno to attempt that overtake. So he has to, I guess, for any moves to be made, he has to do so uh, as soon as possible. So uh, can, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. So the gap between both drivers now sit at, what, just three tenths of a second. So I think we might see Luis Moreno think of or, or be able to make something out of uh, the, the last three or four laps of racing here at Okayama so we'll see how that turns out yeah I think it's time to be a bit more forceful because he's tried the mm. same move a lot of times already uh, it's time to switch it up to just maybe a dive maybe just a really off the wall move and then see here again racer is going to stick it down the middle overshoot the entry a bit and then wait for Moreno to run out of space. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> this, is like a, this is like his measure this like with a laser pointer. His, his, the gap he's put, um, he's allowed Moreno to have is absolutely perfect. <clears throat> there's, there's no way that you can, you can't like condemn him for like uh, blocking or weaving. Yeah. There's really no excess movement, but he just put his car in a place that you really can't do anything but yeah. get back in line. So I think Morin has to change his approach in which corner he should attack. So first corner, actually, he can try a bit, I think. First corner, he can see if there's a opportunity to really get a dive in and then... Can he, though? 
just block him. Um, yeah, dive and block him. And that dive doesn't seem to be happening, so a bit difficult. A yeah, bit yeah. difficult for Luis Moreno. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think I'm seeing lap after lap, I'm seeing kind of the same patterns recurring, so something has to change. Uh, if if uh, Luis Moreno wants to make an overtaking move, well, again, I'm not a fast driver, so I'm not too familiar. But I I think you know Luis Moreno has to I, I guess try to whip out an, a new tool from his toolkit uh, <laughs> if if he wants to. Yes, yeah. uh, pink, yeah. pink hair maybe. <laughs> hey, yeah, perhaps, man. Yeah, okay. The slipstream zone here. Let's see if uh, Moreno Luis Moreno will think of a dive. It now doesn't seem to work. Not close enough. Not enough. Just not enough. And uh, Russell Reyes continues still uh, to hold uh, second position. You can see on uh, on Moreno's face, he is kind of like, <laughs> uh, no, not really. Where where can I do something? When you follow a car for so long, you kind of like stuck to his pace, stuck to his tempo for like so long. It's hard mm -hmm. to pull something like. I'll ring just and then to, to like to give a surprise to the car in front because the car in front has already pretty much seen what you can do. Yeah, so two laps of racing to go here at Okayama. Yeah, three laps, I think. Yeah, three laps. Uh, and every passing moment just the you know the longer the, the move gets delayed the more advantage uh, the the more the advantage will be towards Russell Reyes so yeah I think Russell Reyes has to keep that in mind too and see Russell Reyes in front of him has two uh, cars lapping each other ah mm. uh, okay that's Andrew Wong or well, Andrew Wong could possibly upset is actually quite a lot so um, hopefully not any like physical contact so chest lamp is still seven seconds behind not really able to catch up to the cars in front unless andrew will make it very difficult for these guys be predictable and be <laughs> that's the thing Oi? so yeah so, oh okay yeah. squeezing through there nice. to make so, the overtaking yeah, more has given the inside line to the cars and then have not impeding uh, have not impeded them for uh, uh, for a bit so very good Sponsorship, and then we see here Moreno um, close, but not close enough, really. Unless the GTL in the front has some surprises for them, which is good that uh, we've seen like consistent, like a uh, perfect uh, behavior. It's, it's a good thing, it means the driver are uh, learning racecraft and then learning multi class racing. Okay, and yeah, that oh. means <laughs> that was close, yeah, that was close, but yeah, <laughs> you see, Reyes says Felinch, he doesn't like really think this is it. So, also, see, yeah, uh, Reyes a bit of understeer, not really hitting apex, but this car still rotates on the other exit, and then uh, overlap. Okay, he chose to defend, he chose to defend it inside. Moreno chose to get a cross. Whoa, 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 nice. A nice crossover, really nice crossover. He should be in the front proper here now. Okay, let's see if and he'll see, be able to hold. Oh, oh, oh my god! Sorry, <laughs> the, the, the timing table is in front. Oh my god! Oh, oh no! Russell Reyes goes off. He get oh, unfortunate that he got got a contact spun, and that was after like more than half the race defending his second position. That has happened unfortunately to Russell Reyes, and Luis Moreno will be able to seal effectively his second position. <laughs> but I, I didn't really Whoa. see like a big big impact that could like rotate his car this much. Is it because half his car you know on the grass and then I think that was the reason why he rejoined uh he uh, from from what I from what I can deduce uh I think he got sent a bit wide uh, along the inside and because of that but uh, you know in, in such a situation you'll be panicking and i think that that kind of caused his uh, spin and crash unfortunately yeah so here we see chester lamb if there's any damage to reyes car chester might be able to pick up the pieces but at the same time this is the last lap already so so last lap mean we must pay more attention to our leader <laughs> <laughs> our impeccable uh morena pratama today definitely worthwhile i mean the last race was a bit of a it should be his i mean it, it, rightfully he should be race winner in the series but then 
today I think he will get it proper. Uh, pro to flag, no mistakes. Convincing gap to the car behind, and then also uh, good to see Moreno getting a uh, improvement from his uh, early season, and then for a proper LRL one two. Yeah, so after a whole 40 laps of racing here at Okayama, it will be Moreno Pratama who comes across the start finish line to take round four of the EPP EGT series here at Okayama. Great, great, great dominance by Moreno Pratama in all the races that he's been successful in completing, barring any internet issues. <laughs> yeah. And it would then be most likely Luis Moreno who, you know, hard fought second position. He managed to snatch the second position away from Russell Reyes right towards the end there. Taking coming home in second with Russell Reyes in third. And Chester Lam there in fourth. Very close. Very close. Uh over at the M side of things, it would seem that uh, Leo Leung would have come home first with Hewood Sui and uh Arus coming home in second and third in class respectively. Yeah, so Leo has a very dominating, I would say dominating performance in M class, uh, P8 overall, and then I think he's the only car that's not been left by the left car in M class. And then we see here Apokochen consistently, P5, and then Jerry Ken and Heilan, 6 and 7. And Liu Leung over there in 8th position, uh, rather the, the winner of the M-Class. So class winner in M-Class there, Liu Leung with the uh, beautifully presented Wako's Corvette yeah, machine there. Three wins from this season from four races, I think he wouldn't have expected. Ah. But this is it. This is how you finish the season, this is how you finish your career in the M-Class. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go mess with the podium a little bit. <laughs> A bit of change here for the um, podium uh, ceremony. So we have a new winner, I would say, a new winner. First time winner in Morina Pratama. And then second place, very familiar. I'm not, not sure, you know, second place is a new, also a new winner, uh, Moreno. And then for third place, we still have Pratama with us. So we have here officially first and second LRL uh, League of Races. You, we didn't know we would have to wait until the fourth round to see this, but a one two from LRL, Los uh, Reyes, even though with the um, incident, uh, still finished P3. And then we have um, all the other cars, uh, Chesterland, Paco Chen. Jerry Ken, Hayla, etc. And then, so we also, yeah, so we have uh, the razor finish. So I'm gonna also mess with the um, M class podium for a bit. <laughs> Leo Lam has uh, done a, a treble, yeah, they will call it treble. I have Three rings, so well he and Russell Reyes is on the same level. <laughs> Can we say that each of those has like three rings in the season? And then we yeah. have uh, a new podium winner, uh, Hayward Cho. And then third is again Eris Chan. Who would have fought Eris Chan again, doing the honor for um, his team? And then uh, yeah, I confirmed that the swag on his car is indeed porn. <laughs> so here, two Wacko's car, one two. So wow, a big, a, a big stem of confidence in the late season for the team championship. Uh, the first team to break one hundred points, and then I think should be pretty clear in terms of the team championship. So Eris Chen also, um, along with his teammate, consistently bought some points. So I think potentially SYM could be. Uh, so to finish second uh, in a table after this race. So I would like to see if we can grab Moreno for us. Is he in his disco? No, not really. Oh, oh too bad. So I would just uh, ask probably... It would be nice to ask Hela 
Oh, but he has crashed so probably not really a good. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. Maybe someone from the M standings. I think. Uh, probably hmm? Liu Lan, but yeah, okay. Let's try that again. Let's try his English. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, no worries, when you just do your Cantonese, I cannot. <laughs> yes. Hello. 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 Uh, uh, hello. Hello. In English. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> so, uh, it's okay. Uh, do you know what happened with German? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I, I don't know. In the in the in the third one, he he outbreak he outbreak go the outside. Then I passed it. Also, oh, you then, know. So you know. <laughs> yeah, just just only okay. see the T one. Okay, no okay. no crash to him. But I don't know. I don't know what, what happened, happened in the last yes. after in the last three corners. I don't know what happened. I, I need to see the I need to see the replay first. Okay. Yeah. But that, that is the good. But that is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. There's no contact between the uh, title contenders. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, you are on the same level as Russell Reyes, I would say. You have three wins in a uh, four race season so far. Um, yeah. Should be very happy, right? Uh, like job, yes. job mostly done, really. No, just 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 one game only. Have a just this one race have a uh, many happen because that because uh because have a double double pole and yes. we need to stay focused in the last race. Yes, stable points in the last race. Good. So uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you uh, for winning the race for Wacos and then also congrats to Haywood for P two or one two. So um, thank you. Have a good yeah, thank you. Yeah, congrats, congrats so much. Yeah. Yeah, that was Liu Leung. Uh, great, great, great job there. Taking a win and great job uh, coming to interview with English. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you force people to speak English, sometimes they actually come through, and then <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and I, I think that's really important that uh, there was no contact between the title contenders mm. in the first right, in the first uh, lap. But that is what we want to see, and um, people racing clean and uh, yeah, fair. I'm not sure we will see any like protests from Reyes on the Moreno move. Uh, that looks like a 50-50 because he did squeeze him all the way to the garage. I think that is like a proper like elbowed out move. Uh, we we'll, we we'll hear about it next race, I guess. And the next race is gonna be third of May. All right, that's quite some time away. Yeah, still some time away. I never get a breather, and then in the meantime, actually, I've been really busy because we have been commissioned to hold a esports series for actually three automotive brands. So oh, that's great. That's gonna go down right after we finish EGT, <laughs> and all the preparation is right going right now. So yeah, yeah, probably. I'm not sure if we can also give a, like a after. Co 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 host maybe yeah. with English because it's a really quite an interesting uh, mix up. We have mm. three brands, mm. uh, three type of cars in on three races. So every race is going to be a one make race with one type of cars, and so it's going to be very different skill sets involved. And then we we'll see a lot of the same uh, pro drivers here taking part in that race. So thank you, Weihan, for being with me this time. Uh, this this race went by super fast again. Time just flies when we have like fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, Jay, thanks for having me on the absolutely fantastic racing as usual all season long. And I think today's race was no different. Yes. Uh, apart from the fact that, you know, sometimes when you have drivers that are too fast, <laughs> you just see them well, go fast. I mean, we didn't have just intent, go fast. so don't complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have a new winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for Weihan. And then we'll see you on 3rd of May. Bye. Bye.